All right, hello. Just want to do a quick little video on uh, running your code through an HTML validator. The reason we validate our code is because it is important that it is structured correctly, that everything is done right. There's a lot to HTML. It is, I would say, simple, but there's still a lot going on. Um, as you can see here, I have an HTML document on the right that is wrong. There's issues with this code, lots of issues with the code. But over here, when it's displayed in the web page, eh, nothing going wrong. It looks like a web page, right? Again, a simple web page, but it looks like a web page. Um, but we need to validate this because there are mistakes in this code and it needs to be caught before you turn your work in. Uh, what's the purpose behind this? So when we can start getting into CSS and definitely get into JavaScript, code that doesn't validate correctly will behave poorly. And you want to make sure it's not the HTML that is at fault, but um, the CSS. It's a way to make sure your DOM is correct and that things are selecting correctly. So how do we go about this? Well, the first thing is open up your trusty browser of choice. And um, as you can see I've already gone to a validator here, but I'll just show you how I got there. HTML validator. And in Google we trust, I didn't quite spell it right, but that's all right. We're going to use this W3C markup. That's what I would suggest using. There's other ones here. <clears throat> if you see here, there's other tools available to you, but we're just going to do HTML. When we get into CSS and other stuff, we'll do that. Um, this is also can check if it's OK for mobile or bro broken links. Very important thing. So where, how are we going to do this? You see, notice there are three tabs across the top. One is if you have a published web page, just point this towards your web page and it will check it. Other is you can upload your files here. All right, and there's options. There's options here to do stuff. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to do it by direct input. There's not mm, the easiest way to do it. So here I come over here. I'm going to select all my code. Now I could take and drag and select all that. That's all right. But we're you know not heathens, and we're going to hit Control A, which selects the whole document. And then we're going to hit Control C, which copies it. Come over to the validator, hit Control V, copies it all in, and let me check my work. And you will see there are a ton of errors. Well, not really. I got eight errors and one warning. So let's go ahead and deal with those real quick. Um, all right, let me show you. So you notice, we'll just work our way down. Warning number one, considering a language tag. OK, so yeah, I should do that. Now, I could come here and work in this document. So there's two ways to do it. One, I can come in here and I can work in here and go, all right, language equals English, um, and then check my work. See that arrow went away. And then when I get done here, I can hit Control A, Control C, and then copy it back over here. That's one way to do it. Um, I don't like that because I, any changes I made are not saved until I copy it back over there. I might forget to do that. It seems dangerous to me. But you're perfectly welcome to live on the wild side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and kind of scroll down here. And so I can look at where the mistakes are. It's telling me where the mistakes are in yellow here. And it's also corresponding to an error here. So first off, let me make that same change we did a little earlier before. So I'm going to say, OK, my language is English. Notice that I am having a attribute here. This is called an attribute. Notice it's coming in a value name pair actually sorry language is the name of the attribute the value I'm giving it is en in quotation marks which stands for English all right let's look at this next error it says nameless doc type line one column 11 oh look I forgot to say HTML all right I've been working for a little bit I've made two changes so let me hit control a control C come back over here control a control V and check my work cool that language one is no one there, but it says, where's my next error? No P element in scope, but a P element tag seen. So I have, it's saying that, again, oh, again I have, if I have no clue, it's saying, oh, look, I see an in tag, but I don't see a opening tag. All right. Well, oh, look here. I forgot to put an opening tag here. All right. And again, I can go back and forth. Uh, it says here, in tag li scene, but there were open elements. Oh, look, I have an li here, but there's open elements. Well, what's it talking about? I got an li 
I got an li, but notice there's this new thing, this a tag, which we will talk about, that's a link tag, and I forgot to close it out. So let me go ahead and close that out. Oops, let's go ahead and just do some clever editing. I've made a big change. It's quite possible that that change was causing a lot of my issues. So let's hit Control A, Control V, check my code, and notice that all the other mistakes in the document have gone away. That one tag right there, failing to opening and close tags correctly, cascaded a whole bunch of errors further down. And so by fixing that one thing one at a time, either by working back and forth or working here and then working your way down, um, I cleared up all my errors. This is now a validated code. Um, is it pretty? Eh. Maybe. Um, let's refresh. Notice now that this is the only link and these were blue before. And that's because if you look at the code here, I only have one link in the code so far. I haven't put the other links, but that's coming in a different video. So this is how you use a validator. Please use a validator before you turn your work because I'm definitely, I have my validator built into my document. I have my validator built in here. So um, by fixing all those snakes, I am now validated. So when I check your code, I will automatically be validating it. So hope that was useful.